On day one, I spawned Dan as a baby elemental wolf. My den had been set ablaze by the horrible demon wolf Fenrir and his pack of dark wolves. Bring me the elemental child. Is he talking about me? I made a run for it as Fenrir blasted his fire attacks all over my pack. Wolves all around me fell like flies to his incredible power. Just then, I spotted my mom and quickly rushed to her side. Mom, what happened? Max, Fenrir wants you dead. Go, find the elemental elders. They'll know what to do. Just as I thought we were safe, Fenrir came out of nowhere. Found you. He unleashed a powerful fire attack at me, but before I was killed, my mom jumped in front of it. The attack killed her instantly. No! I couldn't let my mom's death be in vain. I quickly ran for my life. On day two, I was being chased by the powerful Fenrir and his pack. The evil hound sent powerful fire attacks at me from behind. I did my best to evade them, but he managed to hit me with one, leaving me with low health. I'm not going down without a fight. I tried to use my elemental powers to fight back, but I only managed to shoot lightning. Oh no, am I missing all of my other abilities? I continued to run until I was cornered by the ocean. There's nowhere to go, I have to hide. I quickly plunged into the water and found a hiding spot. I watched as Fenrir approached the edge of the water and looked around. I held my breath and waited for him to leave. Run while you can, Elemental Wolf. I'll find you and eliminate you. Only the fire element will reign supreme. The evil hound left. Once the coast was clear, I popped out of the water and gasped for air. <gasps> ah, I need to find the Elemental Elders fast. On day three, I looked for a place to rest while venturing through another restless night. Luckily, I managed to find a cave to take cover in. However, before I could rest, I started to hear the sound of clacking bones from deeper in the cave. I looked further inside to find that the cave was infested with strays. Ah! The strays began to shoot at me with their arrows. They outnumbered and overpowered me in my current state. After all, I was only a baby. Even so, I tried my best to defend myself using my electric elemental powers. I shot at them one by one, but no matter how hard I tried, I was getting overwhelmed. More and more strays would appear to continue the attack. I can't go on! Suddenly, an elemental skeleton came out of nowhere. Leave him alone! The elemental skeleton began to slash through the strays with an electrical blade. Each slash from the elemental sword would strike lightning down onto the strays, killing them almost instantly. I watched in awe as the team of strays didn't stand a chance. Thanks to the incredible power of the elemental skeleton, all of the strays were defeated. Whoa! Thank you for saving me! Who are you? I'm the Elemental Skeleton, one of the Elemental Elders. Wait a sec, I've been looking for you! Your powers need to be awakened to defeat Fenrir. Come with me. Suddenly, we were both teleported away into the unknown. On my next day, I was walking along, when suddenly, I was hacked! The culprit was none other than Silver Wolf the brand new playable character in Honkai Star Rail. What's Honkai Star Rail? Only the best space fantasy RPG around. It's available on both mobile and PC, with PlayStation being added just around the corner. What's great is that you can share your data across all devices. Silver Wolf is the best hacker in the game. She's got a rebellious spirit and is a hardcore gamer. In battle, she uses her hacking abilities to weaken her enemies, meaning she's a great support character. Also new to the game is Locha, the calm to Silver Wolf's fire. In battle, he's a healer, but that's not all he can do. His ultimate causes AoE damage and gets rid of enemies' buffs. Explore a meticulously crafted sci-fi universe with rich in-game lore and interesting side stories. I love getting lost in the world and just seeing what it has to offer. The combat in Honkai Star Rail is great as there's ways to truly customize your strategy. Fight against diverse enemies in cool environments for the ultimate experience. So don't wait. Download Honkai Star Rail now and use the code on screen for an extra 50 stellar jades. Thanks Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring this video. On days four through seven, I appeared inside of a mysterious room with the first elemental elder. Elder, how am I supposed to defeat Fenrir? To defeat the Dreadwolf, you must first understand him. Fenrir has always been envious of the power that us elemental mobs possess. He vowed that one day, he would eliminate all of us so that he would be the only elemental mob remaining. To prevent this, we have locked away five elemental artifacts that would unlock your full power. You must find the Tome of Terra, the Aqua Orb, the Infernal Amulet, the Aether Feather, and the Spirit Shard, and take down the evil Fenrir. So why can't I just take these ones? Oh, these, uh, these are just replicas. 100% plastic. Ah. Max, after everything I've said, do you feel up to the task? You can count on me! 
Just then, the room began to tremble and Fenrir broke inside. At last, I found you. Fenrir began to blast fire around the room like crazy. In a matter of seconds, the entire place was engulfed in flames. Stand down. The elemental elder charged in and began to duke it out with Fenrir. The demon hound had the power to spit loads of flames. The room was almost entirely engulfed in fire. Despite this, the elemental elder charged in and slashed him down with his mythical blade. It would deal massive damage to the beast and even struck him with lightning. But Fenrir wasn't giving in. He retaliated with his own powerful attacks and hurt the elder with his massive jaws. The two were neck and neck, but Fenrir's might was beginning to become overwhelming. Despite the elder's incredible strength, he was still no match for the fury of Fenrir. Run, Max. Your last hope. Before I could intervene, the elder teleported me away. On days 8 through 10, I appeared back in the overworld. Fenrir is powerful. I need to find the five elemental artifacts before it's too late. My first order of business was to make a shelter for myself, so I scouted out a location to get to work. I ended up finding a massive natural cavern with tons of space. This will make for a great den. I started to build myself a brand new wolf's den that would reflect my element of thunder. I added lightning sources to the pillars to look like charged up lightning rods. Next, I made an altar to place all the elemental artifacts as I found them. I used my lightning powers to mark the first pillar. Lastly, I marked a spot as my personal corner of the cave, adding a huge elemental bed and everything I'd need to survive. After a lot of building, I had a good start. Man, I'm hungry. Time to go hunting for food. I searched around and spotted a baby sheep being chased by a horde of Fenrir's goons. Leave me alone! The little sheep used lightning powers to try and zap down the enemies, but she was too weak to win. She's an elemental mob like me. I have to help her. I charged in and began to blast away at the goons with my own electric powers. They snapped at me with their strong jaws and shot strange red lasers at me for loads of damage. They had me in numbers, so I had to keep my distance so I wouldn't be overwhelmed. I shot back at them with my electric powers and dwindled down the entire pack's health with my elemental abilities. The lightning spread across the whole pack, causing them to fall one after the other. Despite my size, I managed to zap all the goons to a crisp. Upon their deaths, they dropped some steak. Don't mind if I do. I gobbled down some of the meat and suddenly felt myself change. My legs grew longer and my body was more powerful. I was an adult elemental wolf with 15 hearts. Ah, that hit the spot. Thank you for saving me. I'm Remy. Nice to meet you. I'm Max. Looks like Fenrir is after you too. Come stay with me. I took Remy home and got to work on her very own room in the base. I added accents that reflected her element of thunder. This is great! Thank you! I think you should take this. The electric sheep tossed over a map titled the Tome of Terra. The Tome of Terra? That's one of the artifacts! I better check this out! On days 11 through 14, I arrived at the location on the map to find a massive dig site. Fenrir's dark wolves were already searching for the Tome of Terra. Oh no! I have to get it before they do! I needed to get through, but I knew if I was spotted, I wouldn't stand a chance against an entire army. Wait a sec, I can dig my way in. As an elemental wolf, I had the ability to dig quickly with my paws. I began to tunnel my way into the ground and avoided the goon's detection. I kept digging until I fell through the floor. Ah! Luckily, I managed to land in a pool of water to break my fall. Whew. I better find it before anyone else does. I began to explore the massive temple in search of the Tome of Terra. I was getting further in when I was stopped by a bottomless pit. I better watch my step. I hopped from rock to rock over the dangerous pit below. One misstep and my journey was already over. Thankfully, I managed to make it to the other side. Nothing can stop me! Just then, the room began to tremble around me. I turned around to find a goon was blocking my path. The dark dog lunged at me with its horrible fangs. On days 15 through 17, I was fighting one of Fenrir's goons. He came at me with his vicious fangs, but I wasn't going down without a fight. I hit him with my lightning powers. They were so strong, it left a cloud of electricity around him, making the fur on his back stand straight up. He tried to get in close, but his fangs were no match for my lightning bolts. I kept striking him and his attacks were getting closer. I knew I could defeat him. I honed in all of my power and managed to defeat the Dark Wolf. I gotta keep moving before more show up. I hurried in deeper and finally arrived at the altar. There, the Tome of Terra stood waiting. I went towards the altar to claim it, but an earth golem stopped me in my tracks. I am Terek, 
the guardian of this artifact and the elemental elder of Earth. Please, I need the dome to stop Fenrir. You must prove your strength first. Are you as tough as rock? Or soft like mud. The hulking golem ran towards me with all of his might, and I braced for impact. He went in with his bare fists and started to pound me down to size. I used my electricity attacks to try and stun him, until suddenly he started summoning rocks from the ground and launched them in my direction. I tried to evade his attacks while shooting my lightning back at him. It was difficult to land a hit when he protected himself with his floating rocks, but I couldn't let up. Even worse, he was able to summon a massive boulder that was almost impossible to dodge. Luckily, I was a nimble wolf and narrowly evaded the attacks. I continued to zap him until I finally started to gain an advantage. The battle was fierce, but I managed to overpower the golem. He finally surrendered to my power. You are worthy of the tome. Take it and unlock your earth element. I claimed the Tome of Terror from the altar and felt a new power surge through me. I was now able to control the earth beneath my feet. My new abilities gave me the strength to summon rocks and throw them in any direction. This new power also gave me five more hearts, increasing it to a total of 20. One artifact down, four more to go. The room trembled once again, and Fenrir's new army of goons arrived to stop me. He has the Tome! Get him! On days 18 through 21, Tarek and I were fighting off Fenrir's men. They were far tougher than the other goons I had faced so far. They were heavily armored and used their intense flames to fuel their heavy fists. Each attack the horde landed dealt loads of damage, so I tried to keep them at bay with my new earth abilities. Tarek and I tried to beat them down, but they were resilient. Even though their armor was cracking, they wouldn't let up. I did everything I could, but even with my new earth powers, I couldn't fend them off. Hurry ahead, Max. I'll hold them off. I followed Tarek's orders and made a run for it. I managed to narrowly escape the underground temple, but I was in a completely different location. Am I lost? I ran through the overworld looking for my den, when I suddenly spotted a bear with his head stuck in a beehive. You okay in there? Oh, bother. I couldn't resist a sweet honey, but it seems I've gotten myself stuck. This'll be a perfect chance to try out my new powers. I attempted to move the rock out of the way, when I suddenly heard a buzzing sound behind me. I turned around and realized I was being swarmed by angry bees. Ah! They flew at me with their stingers and I began to fight off the swarm with my elemental abilities. I primarily focused on using my new earth element and levitated dirt blocks to pummel into the bees. I sent big chunks of earth at the swarm to beat down their numbers bit by bit, but they were quick flyers. I began to zap the bees down to stun them and continued my onslaught. They may have outnumbered me, but I was proving to be more powerful. Thanks to my new strength, I managed to defeat the bees and save both myself and the bear. If the Tome of Terra is this strong, I wonder how powerful the other artifacts are. I completely moved the rock out of the way, freeing the bear. Oh, thank you, Brave Wolf. Take this. As a gift of thanks, he tossed over a honeycomb sword. This will definitely help in my quest. Thank you! He then pointed me in the direction of my base, and I set off. On days 22 through 25, I returned to my base with the help of the bear's directions. I think it's time to give this place some TLC. I started by adding the Tome of Terra to my collection of elemental artifacts. Then I began terraforming a nearby area into sandstone to celebrate obtaining my new earth powers. Afterwards, I made a chest room to hold all of my materials and treasures. With that, my expansion was complete. Once I was done building, I wanted to have a landmark to avoid getting lost again in the future, so I found a high point for me to howl at the moon. Ow! I won't lose this place again. Suddenly, dark clouds gathered in the sky, and a powerful thunderstorm began to rain down onto me. I rushed inside of my den to take cover and realized it was being flooded by the downpour. I gotta move fast! This place is gonna flood! I quickly ran to each hole around the base and patched them up with whatever materials I had on hand. Just as I was patching up the final hole, a mysterious letter fell through it. This is Wade the Water Elemental Elder. Make haste to the South Sea. Something horrible is after the artifact. What happened? I need to get there fast. On days 26 through 28, I arrived at the South Sea to find the place was encased in ice. There, a monster loomed over the Water Elemental Elder, Wade. He had been encased to the neck in ice. My men are after the Aqua Orb now. Soon I will give it to Fenrir and be rewarded for my efforts. Yeah, right. You couldn't even find the orb even if I gave you the map. Silence! The beast uses ice powers to freeze over Wade completely. I ran out and confronted the monster. 
Hey, let him go. I charged in, ready to take down the villain where he stood. The ice golem had a variety of freezing attacks that he threw at me. He was able to summon powerful ice spikes and send them flying in my direction. I did my best to evade his attacks, but the ice was so slippery it was hard to keep my footing. I tried to use my earth elemental attacks, but there was no earth to bend. Only frozen water was around us for miles. Instead, I went at him up close with my honeycomb sword and tried to stun him with my electric attacks. Unfortunately for me, he was able to use frost breath to deal massive damage whenever I tried to attack. Despite my efforts, I was no match for the powerful beast. Is that the best you got? Get him! He summoned a powerful sea monster out of nowhere and it began to chase me down the ice. I made a run for it until spotting a gap in the surface of the water. I dove inside to try and throw him off my tail, but they followed after me. I swam and swam, but the monster wouldn't let up. I was gonna drown under the surface of the ice. Is this the end? Just then, a dolphin swam up and tossed a potion at me. Drink this, quick! I swallowed it down and was suddenly given water breathing. It felt amazing! Follow me! I followed the dolphin to a safe place and managed to lose the sea monster. Thanks for helping me back there. Who are you? I'm Darian. I'm Wade's apprentice. Can you help me get the aqua orb? I need it to restore my water elemental abilities. You got yourself a deal. On days 29 through 32, Darian and I arrived at a giant wall of ice and behind it was hiding a secret underwater city. Let me in! I charged at the ice and tried to break it down, but it wouldn't budge. How am I supposed to get inside? I've got this. Darian took out a strange potion and threw it at the ice wall and managed to chip through it. Hurry, go now! I swam through the gap and made it to the other side. However, it quickly froze over once again. Looks like there's no turning back. I parted ways with Darian and headed deeper into the city. Finally, I found the aqua orb I was seeking, but it was guarded by the same powerful sea monster from before. Well, 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 looks like the puppy came crawling back. You die here. The sea monster lunged at me and I braced myself for battle. He had the power to breathe frost breath and chomped into me with his powerful icy fangs. I tried to get it close with my honeycomb sword, but its ice attacks caused me to plummet to the ground. I couldn't move, but I retaliated with my electric moves. The electricity dealt loads of damage in the water and I managed to break free from the ice he froze me in. I realized that there were marble bricks on the floor, so I used my earth elemental ability to levitate the blocks and send them flying at the monster. They crashed into him, dealing loads of damage. I kept up my onslaught, giving him little room to move. All of my abilities combined with the boost I'd gotten from Darian's potion made me a tough foe. I landed one more attack and managed to defeat the sea monster. Time to get that orb. I swam up and finally claimed the next elemental artifact for myself. I suddenly felt an overwhelming power rush through me. My body began to transform, changing myself into an even more powerful elemental wolf. I gained five additional hearts and the ability to manipulate water and ice. Let's see how powerful this thing is. I used the power of the orb to melt the ice wolves back into their water state. Nice! Time to save the water elder. On days 33 through 35, I returned to where Wade was being held captive and confronted the monster once again. You! I thought I had you executed! Think again! I charged in to fight the monster with my new water powers. I shot balls of water at the ice golem while he tried to hit me with the same powers as before. He was still incredibly strong and tried to freeze me in place with his frost breath while sending ice spikes from afar. Unfortunately for him, I had grown much stronger myself. I pummeled him with my honeycomb sword and continued to fire all my water attacks at the oversized popsicle. The battle was fierce, but I managed to come out on top. Once the dust settled, I used the power of the aqua orb and freed Wade from his ice prison. Thank you for the help, Elemental Wolf. You are worthy of that artifact. Do you have anything that can help me on my quest? Take my apprentice, Darian, with you. He could offer you some support while I stay and protect this part of the realm. I agreed with Wade and headed back to the base with Darian to regroup. Time to get to work! I began expanding my cave home and added a water-filled area made of prismarine blocks to symbolize my new element of water. Afterwards, I made Darian his own aquatic room perfectly fit for a dolphin. This is great, but I'm kind of hungry. I'm on it. I built a pen to hold cows as well as a small farm. I wanted to have a consistent food source for not only me, but my vegetarian residents too. With that, my expansion was complete. Before I finished, I added the aqua orb to my collection of elemental artifacts. Nice, only three more to go. Fenrir doesn't stand a chance. Just then, I spotted a mysterious tunnel I had never seen before. I wonder what's in there. I walked through it, and when I emerged on the other side, I discovered a civilization of gem golems, but their homes had been set on fire. What's going on here? To my horror, Fenrir emerged in front of me. <laughs> there you are. 
On days 36 to 39, I was face to face with Fenrir once again, but this time it was different. I have the power of the Aqua Orb now. Your flames don't stand a chance against me. You think that little water ball is going to stop me? My flames will burn right through it. The Demon Hound ran full speed at me, and the two of us clashed in battle. Fenrir spat out his flames at me, and I used my brand new water element to extinguish them. I thought surely this would give me the edge I need to beat him. The gem golems ran around in a frenzy as the epic battle continued. I pummeled them with my water attacks from afar, and even used frost breath to freeze them in place. Unfortunately for every fire I put out, Fenrir would ignite ten times more. The battle was becoming a struggle. I couldn't keep up! Despite having water powers, they weren't enough to match the intensity of Fenrir's flames. No! I have to defeat you! He came for the final blow when suddenly one of his goons ran up to him. Sir, we found the whereabouts of the infernal amulet. Then I'll spare you, Elemental Wolf. That way you can watch me destroy everything you care for. <laughs> Fenrir left with his minion, leaving me alone in the flaming village. I helped the gem golems recover from the aftermath and extinguish the fires with my water powers. Thank you for saving us. I didn't save anyone. Fenrir is going to get the next elemental artifact before I can. Actually, we can help with that. I followed the gem golem who led me to a mysterious nether portal. This portal will take you to the amulet, but in your current state, the nether is too hot for you to survive. You must train and gain fire resistance. If that means I can get the amulet before Fenrir, then I'm in! On days 40 through 43, I was training with the gem golems to build my resistance to fire. My first test was a jump from pillar to pillar over a pit of boiling lava. One slip up would have finished me, but I managed to clear the obstacle course. Next, I had to walk over a bed of magma blocks. The hot coals burnt my feet and dealt damage, but I pushed through the pain. Finally, I was at my third and final challenge. I had to fight the powerful Soul Blaze. Bring it on! The fiery beast attacked me. He wasn't gonna hold back and neither was I. The Soul Blaze was a stronger opponent due to his fiery abilities. His firepower was hotter than anything I've ever faced before. He could fly so high and shoot fireballs in any direction I stepped. The place was so hot that it was melting right through my ice powers, but I knew I couldn't give up. I used my water abilities to put out his devastating flames. When I was able to put out the fire, I got in closer to hit him with my power powerful honeycomb sword. With one final blow, I defeated my opponent once and for all. I did it! Suddenly, I gained armor and fire resistance. You are now ready for the nether. Come with me. I followed the gem golem back towards the portal and prepared myself for the journey ahead. Infernal amulet, here I come. On days 44 through 46, I arrived in the nether to find a volcano in the distance. Unfortunately, the path towards it was crawling with armored blazes. You must be Fenris men! Let me through! I honed in my power and tried to brute force my way through the army. I charged in with no fear. I started striking the enemies with my electric ability. My powers left lightning bolts surrounding the herd, but they kept coming at me with their quick fists. I tried maneuvering around them so I could freeze them with my ice powers. Their strength and numbers overwhelmed me, so I had to use every elemental power that I had. Normally I could have taken them, but the heat of the nether empowered his men. I was forced to retreat. I can make it through here! I scouted out another route and found a pathway full of magma blocks that led into a cave system. I ran over the blocks with these thanks to my fire resistance and went inside of the cave. When I came out the other side, I was closer to the top of the volcano. Almost there! I built a bridge across the gap and finally reached the peak. There's the amulet! Suddenly, a giant fiery monster emerged from the inside of the volcano. I am Ignis, the fire elemental elder. Leave this place at once! You don't understand. I'm trying to stop Fenrir. Yeah, right. I will rid this place of trespassers like you. Ignis used his immense power to pull me towards him, causing me to float over the lava below. Good luck surviving. No! On days 47 through 50, Ignis dropped me into the volcano. But thankfully, my fire resistance protected me from taking damage. What? Why aren't you burning alive? I'm an elemental wolf. I'm capable of embracing fire just like you! I used my water elemental powers to turn the lava below me into obsidian. I now had a battlefield to fight on. Bring it on, Ignis! Me and the elemental elder clashed and began fighting for the infernal amulet. Ignis used his massive sword and shield to his advantage, doing a lot of damage. With his strength, he was able to smash the floor and push me away, making it hard to get in close with my honeycomb sword. He was definitely the toughest opponent I had faced so far, but I wasn't about to give up. I used my water attacks to try and extinguish his flames. But just like Fenrir, his heat was far hotter than the strength of my water attacks. 
I switched to my Frost Breath to try and cool him off that way. It seemed to be effective since it caused him to freeze in place. I took that as my chance to hit him with everything I had, but he was able to melt through it. He continued his onslaught, and so I tried using my other elements of lightning and earth to my advantage. I levitated a massive piece of obsidian and launched it into the Elder for massive damage. We went back and forth. It was anyone's game, but I gradually began to overpower the fiery warrior. After a heated battle, I managed to take down the elemental elder. You are strong. I see now that your intentions are pure. I'm sorry for my rash behavior. You may now retrieve the amulet for yourself. I used my water jet ability to scale up the volcano and obtained the infernal amulet. I gained five additional hearts and finally regained my ability to cast fire. Nothing can stop me now. Suddenly, the horde of armored blazes that stopped me from before appeared. The Elemental Wolf has our amulet! Get him! On days 51 through 54, I was being attacked by the army of armored blazes. I took this as an opportunity to try out my new powers. I blasted down the swarms of mobs with my powerful fire breath. The strength of the infernal amulet was unmatched. The horde of armored blazes swarmed around me and hit me with their fiery fists. Luckily, the infernal amulet allowed me to take more hits than before, and I scorched them with my flames. I also used my frost breath to freeze them in their tracks and cool things down a bit. Ignis fought along my side and slashed them down with his powerful sword. They may have had an army, but with our combined forces, they didn't stand a chance. After a long battle, I managed to take out every last one of them. I'm only two artifacts away from ultimate power. Good work, Elemental One. Take this sword to help aid you in future battles. Ignis dropped his incinerator sword. Wow, thanks! Just when I thought I was safe, Fenrir appeared. You may have gotten the amulet, but my fury is only just beginning. Suddenly, the ground trembled and I came to a horrible realization. He's gonna make the volcano erupt! <laughs> I hope you like to swim. The demon hound ran off and Ignis shouted at me. Run while you still can! I ran as fast as I could back towards the nether portal I'd entered from as the volcano erupted behind me. Balls of fire fell everywhere, but I managed to escape before it was too late. On days 55 through 57, I returned to the overworld, narrowly escaping from Fenrir's attacks. Fenrir is only getting stronger. I need to get the last two artifacts as soon as I can. I took a moment to expand my base, starting with a brand new fire area to reflect my new elemental abilities. I used plenty of nether blocks and lava to really make the place toasty. Once done, I added the infernal amulet to my elemental collection. Only air and spirit left on the list. Next, I improved the entrance to the cave itself by adding an elemental wolf head to the outside. I wanted everyone to know that this was my den. With that, my expansion was complete. As I admired my work, I spotted Remy outside practicing her thunder abilities. This is hard. Don't think too much about it. Just go with the flow. Remy listened to me and tried again. Thanks to my advice, she was able to use a new thunder power. Wow, thank you. Suddenly, we heard howling and decided to investigate. When we got to the howling point, we spotted a werewolf. Ooh, lamb meat. He ran over and kidnapped my friend. Hey! Get back here! On days 58 through 61, I was chasing the werewolf who stole Remy. He took a turn and I followed, but all that I saw was a log cabin in the woods. What the? Where did he go? I walked into the house and found a strange fuzzy grandma baking cookies. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm looking for a wolf that stole my friend. Oh, goodness. Have a seat in the other room. I went into the other room and saw Remy in a cage. What? I got you now, you mutt. The grandma tore off her disguise and revealed herself to be the werewolf before lunging at me. I ran out of the back door and we fought. The werewolf came at me with his extremely sharp claws. He slashed and swiped, but he was no match for my elemental powers. I used my fire attacks to deal some heavy burn damage, as well as my water, earth, and electric abilities. The incinerator sword that Ignis gave me came in clutch, giving me a bonus attack that summons bursts of flames from the ground. The werewolf managed to dish out some heavy hits, but after an onslaught of damage from my various elemental attacks, he couldn't best me. We might have been matched in size, but all my training gave me the upper hand. Thanks to my elemental powers, the Fleabag didn't stand a chance. Upon his death, he dropped a mysterious map, the Aether Feather. This leads to the next artifact. Looks like I know where I'm headed next. After learning this new information, I broke Remy out of her cage. On days 62 through 64, I followed the map until spotting the temple in the sky. How am I supposed to get up there? I looked around and spotted a Pegasus offering taxi services. One flight to the temple, please. 
Sure, but that'll be a hundred emeralds. A hundred? I don't have that kind of money. No emeralds, no ride. I had no other way up, so I decided to look for some ways to earn emeralds. I went to a nearby village and sold them my elemental services. I started by using my electric powers to power on the lights in a home. Next, I used my water abilities to fill the water sources for a brand new farm. Finally, I lit all the furnaces in the village's kitchen using my fire abilities. Thanks to all the hard work I did on my part-time jobs, I finally saved up 100 emeralds. Time to get that taxi service. Just as I was about to leave, a little bat flew up and snagged my emeralds. Hey, those are mine! I quickly ran after them. I needed that money to get the next artifact. On days 65 through 68, I chased the thief until finally cornering them. There's nowhere to run. Give me my money back! No way! See you later, sucker! The bat threw a splash potion on me, causing me to levitate into the air. I flew higher and higher, until I was touching the clouds! Oh gosh! A fall from this height would be fatal! Suddenly, the potion wore off and I went plummeting to my doom! I thought quickly and used my bucket of water to clutch the fall. I was safe! Uh-oh! Before the bat could fly off, I jumped at him and began to hit him with everything I had. I used all of my elemental powers to put him in his place. Hand over the emeralds! Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. The bat tossed over all my money and took to the skies. With my money back in hand, I returned to the taxi horse to ask for his services. Here's the money. Perfect! Hop on! We took to the skies and finally arrived at the temple. I hopped off and began to take a look around the outer perimeter. I even managed to find a chest holding a pair of obsidian boots with feather falling. This'll be useful. Just then, I spotted a little fairy entity scurry by. Where are they headed? I better follow them. On days 69 through 72, I followed the little creature to the main structure where the ether feathers stood waiting. There's the artifact! I ran up to grab it, but the tiny fairy creature suddenly attacked me with a powerful wind attack. Ow! What the heck? I'm Ariel, the Air Elemental Elder. Why are you here? Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm Max. I'm here to get the Ether Feather. You're a wolf, like Fenrir. I can't trust you. There was no reasoning with her. The Elemental Elder attacked. I charged at the flying creature with all my might. But as soon as I got close, she blasted me back with her powerful wind blade. I realized I wouldn't be able to get close to land any attacks. So I started to shoot my fire abilities from a distance. I weaved and hid behind pillars to dodge her overwhelming wind strikes. The power of the wind was too much for me to handle, but I was able to slow her down with my freeze breath long enough for me to use my elemental earth powers to hit the creature from a distance. Everything I threw at her seemed to brush off like it was nothing. I was losing the battle, when suddenly one of Fenrir's men rushed into the room. The feather is mine. He ran towards the altar, but I couldn't let it fall into Fenrir's hands. I stopped the goon and defeated him with my elemental powers. Haha! <laughs> I'll never let Fenrir take this artifact! Suddenly, Ariel came up to me. You sacrificed yourself to protect the artifact? I see now you are not my enemy. Very well. You may claim the feather. Thank you, ma'am. I grabbed the fourth artifact and suddenly my body changed shape. My limbs grew longer and my jaws were more powerful, changing me into my final form. I gained five additional hearts and the ability to manipulate the air. One more artifact to go. On days 73 through 75, I returned to the base and decided it was time to work on some more expansions. I started by adding the new ether feather to my collection of elemental artifacts. Next, I started with a wind area to celebrate my new elemental powers. I added artificial clouds with a mini house on top. I can see everything from here, but it's not enough. I continued by adding more mini clouds all over the base to honor the air temple in the sky. Finally, I updated my living quarters to make it a lot cozier. With that, my expansion was complete. I think it's really coming together. After building, I visited my altar and admired the ether feather on its pedestal. I'm only one away from having the powers I need to defeat Fenrir. I wonder what powers the spirit shard even holds. Suddenly, I was teleported away and reappeared in a strange room. In front of me stood the elemental skeleton from the beginning of my journey. Elemental Elder, you're okay! I do have a name, you know. Well, you never told me it. That doesn't matter now. I need to tell you something before he finds us. Like clockwork, the room trembled around us and I had a horrible feeling. It's too late. Here he comes! On days 76 through 79, Fenrir broke into the room. You managed to escape last time, but your journey ends here, Elder. I will fight until my dying breath. I won't let you hurt him. The Elemental Elder and myself charge into Fenrir to finish him off. 
With our combined strength, we were having no problem fighting off the evil wolf. I utilized my new wind ability to sweep the monster off his feet, while the elder used his powerful sword to dwindle Fenrir's health. When we thought we were winning, our foe blasted us with a flurry of fire attacks that quickly chopped our health in half. As the whole room was burning, I acted fast and utilized my water powers to douse the flames. It was no use. For every flame I got rid of, another appeared. Even with all this newfound power, we were still losing the fight. To my horror, the demon hound was still too strong. Even with the elder backing me up, we didn't stand a chance. <laughs> Take this. Fenrir blasted the elemental elder with one of his fire attacks and critically wounded him. Elder! Listen to me, Max. Seek the village of the lambs. Only they can take you to the spirit shard. The elder died, leaving only his sword in his place. No! <laughs> my fire will reign supreme! I snagged the sword and ran for my life as Fenrir chased behind me. On days 80 through 83, I was being pursued by the evil demon hound Fenrir. I didn't think I was gonna make it, when suddenly I heard a voice. Over here. I looked over and spotted a sheep calling for me. I quickly ran towards them and into a hiding spot. Grr, run while you can. I'll find you and destroy you. Fenrir walked away, leaving me alone with the sheep. Thank you for helping me. Any friend of the elders is a friend of ours. Come with me. I followed the sheep and they led me into their quiet sheep village. Everything there was made of hay bales and all the sheep lived happily together. This must be where I needed to go. Can you take me to the spirit shard? It resides in a very special place. The spirit shard is in the spirit realm. We can perform a ritual, but be warned, if you die in the spirit realm, you die in real life. That's a risk I'm willing to take. I followed the sheep into a strange building where other sheep were already waiting. The ritual is about to begin. Sit on the bed, Max. I did as I was told, and all of the sheep began to chant. <laughs> a strong feeling fell over me, and I began to feel very sleepy. I slowly fell into a trance. On days 84 through 86, I appeared inside of a mystical world. The ritual was a success! I must be in the spirit realm! I began to explore the new realm for any signs of the spirit shard I was seeking. As I searched, I spotted a mysterious spirit standing alone in a field. Whoa. Excuse me, I... <laughs> to my horror, the spirit attacked me. The screech from the spirit jump scared me while also breaking the ground beneath us. I used my elemental powers against it, but my hits were not doing any damage. I moved left and right trying to defend myself, but it was unlike anything I had faced before. The spirit realm had proven to be my biggest challenge yet. I thought I was done for, when out of nowhere, a powerful projectile hit the beast and scared it off. That's right, Scram. Who are you? I'm Zion, the elemental elder of spirit. Why are you in my realm? I quickly explained to the elder my goal to obtain the spirit shard and defeat Fenrir. You couldn't even stand up to that monster. You're not worthy. How can I prove my worth? There is a special tree in this realm that holds a crystal apple. Obtain it, and I'll let you have the artifact. You got it! On days 87 through 89, I sought after the crystal apple tree. After a bit of traveling, I found a massive tree with a ton of apples hanging from the top. There it is! I began to trek my way closer towards the base of the tree, but I was stopped by a menacing fire elemental. He began attacking me with fiery attacks to protect my prize. The fire elemental charged me with spinning shields dealing massive damage. He also had a powerful fire breath, which caused me to jump back. With some quick thinking, I used my water powers to fend for myself. My water was overwhelming him and helping me not take any damage to his mouth flames. With every water strike I hit the elemental with, the weaker his attacks got. The spinning shield started to slow down too. I knew I could defeat him. Once the fire monster was defeated, I inched my way closer to the tree until the ground began to tremble. It was an earth elemental. Another one? Fine, let's go. The earth elemental ran at me, trembling the ground. With his huge claws and loud roar, he was able to manipulate the earth around me. Quickly changing the landscape of the battlefield, I had to act fast. I used any power I could to fend off the beast, but nothing seemed to work until I tried my wind powers. I was able to sweep the monster from the ground, removing his element from the equation. Stunned by my wind attacks, I pushed him into the water, giving me the advantage. With one final blow, he was defeated. I did it! I saw. I turned around and realized that Zion had teleported to me. You used the power of the elements to aid you through all of your obstacles. Now you have one final test. What's that? Defeat me in battle. 
Before I could answer, he teleported us to the top of the tree, and the elemental elder charged at me. On days 90 through 92, I was in the middle of battle with the final elemental elder. If I wanted to avenge my mom and defeat Fenrir, I had to win this, no matter what. Zion's power was great, but my mastery of all the elements gave me the edge. He blasted me with powerful lightning attacks, dwindling my health with each blow. I switched between the elements of fire, earth, water, air, and lightning to bring down the elemental elder's health as much as I could. He wasn't going to make this fight easy, but after some back and forth, it seemed like I could win this fight. Thanks to the power of all my elements, I landed the finishing blow on Zion, winning me the battle. You did well. Congratulations. You are worthy of this. Zion casted magic and caused the spirit shard to appear on a pedestal right in front of me. I took my prize and suddenly gained five additional hearts and my lightning element powers were upgraded. I'm not done yet. It's time to face Fenrir. Not so fast. Be warned that when you return to the overworld, it may not look the same as when you first left. Be prepared for anything. It's okay. With this new power, I'm prepared to face whatever stands in my way. With that, Zion casted a spell on me to return to the overworld. On days 93 through 95, I woke up in the sheep village to find that it had been destroyed all around me. What happened here? Just then, Fenrir came out of nowhere. Time to die! You monster! What happened? What did you do? I've come to kill you and claim that little shard of yours. Prepare to die. Fenrir lunged at me and I braced myself. He blasted me with a new attack. He's gotten a lot stronger since the last time we fought. His red fiery beams really packed a punch, dealing some serious damage to my health. I zapped him with my new enhanced electric ability, but he still charged forward seemingly uninjured. His overbearing strength was taking a toll on me, and I couldn't do much damage onto him. Even with all this new power and all the elements in my hands, Fenrir was still beating me. His newfound strength was taking a toll on my health, but I tried my hardest to get my best attacks in and defend myself. I couldn't let myself lose, but he was just too tough. I fought as hard as I could, but I was weakened by my time in the spirit realm. He was too powerful. Leave him alone. Suddenly, I spotted all the elemental elders ready for battle. Surrender, Fenrir. Your evil stops here. Fenrir blasted a strong wave of fire and landed a fatal blow onto the elders. No! They all fell, and he grew even bigger and more powerful. Who's next? I fled while I still had the chance, but this couldn't go on any longer. This has to end now. On days 96 through 98, I returned to my base to prepare for my final battle. I added the spirit shard to my elemental altar, finally completing the full set of artifacts. I won't let the elders down. I'm going to defeat Fenrir. Next, I added an area to better reflect my element of spirit. I planted a huge tree in the center of my base as a symbol of the mastery of all elements. I even added a little room inside to be as close to nature as possible. Finally, I used the power of all the elements combined to bring even more nature to my base, filling it with lush grass and flowers. With that, my base was finally complete. Huh, <sighs> this is the perfect space for an elemental wolf. Once I was done building, I gathered up some food for the battle ahead. Just then, Remy ran up to me. Hey, Max, I just wanted to say thank you for everything. Of course. Remy tossed over a map titled Fenrir's Castle. This is going to be a huge help. Thank you. I took the map with me and began to travel towards my final destination. On day 99, I arrived at the entrance of Fenrir's Castle. The place was surrounded by lava and fire. As I got closer to the entrance, a swarm of Fenrir's goons stopped me. Surrender now. You're not stopping me. I charged in and began to unleash the power of my elemental attacks. The herd of Fenrir goons looked fierce, but I was ready for battle. I blasted the enemies with my fire powers and burnt the fur off the goons, but it became clear that fire was their strength, not a weakness. I switched to my wind abilities and whipped up a whirlwind that blew a group of the goons into the lava around us. I was running left and right dodging, so I could strike at the right moments. The werewolves bit and clawed at me, and the furnace golems grabbed me and threw me into the air. They kept coming at me wave after wave, but I wasn't going to let up. I changed my approach, using my water jets to cool down the golems, weakening them greatly. I froze the werewolves to statues and struck at them with Ignis's blazing sword. I continued striking them with my thunder and evaporated most of the villains away. The army didn't stand a chance. I managed to obliterate them all. Who's next? Me. 
Just then, a massive three-headed wolf of the underworld appeared before me and attacked. Fenrir had some strong allies, but my elemental power was stronger. The three-headed monster began summoning goons of his own. The monster and his minions shot fire in my direction along with facing me head-on with ferocious bite attacks. I continued my onslaught of strikes against my enemies, dwindling their health. When I thought I had brought down the smaller one, another one would take its place. My upgraded elemental power was beginning to seem too much for the Cerberus Beast. His health was low enough for me to want to finish this fight even faster. The guard was stronger than anything I had faced yet, but even he and his minions fell to my ultimate power. Without hesitation, I continued further into the castle. Brace yourself, Fenrir! The elemental wolf is coming for you! On day 100, I entered the chambers of Fenrir to find him waiting for me. Looks like you've come right to me. Are you ready to surrender? You wish! It's over, Fenrir! I've mastered all the elements! That doesn't matter. The power of my flames will always come out on top! I'll be the test of that! We both charged in, ready to take on each other for one last battle. This ended here and now. Fenrir hit me with his destructive flames, doing extreme amounts of damage. I used my freeze breath to slow him down and reduce the flames, but that didn't seem to work. His powerful flamethrower ability knocked off my heat shield armor, leaving me more vulnerable. I needed to win this battle for my family and all the elemental ancestors before me. I wasn't gonna back down. I played to my strengths and began using my wind, throwing him up in the sky. I struck him with my powerful heat beams, dwindling his health. I felt the powers of the elders surging through me, giving me extra strength as the battle went on. I landed one final attack, and the demon hound lost to my power. I was victorious! I did it! Don't forget to download Honkai Star Rail now, and use the code on screen for an extra 50 stellar jades. Thanks Honkai Impact for sponsoring this video.